Hey everybody, welcome to Absolute Comics. I'm Sal, that's Dan. Benny was, is, is coming back. He'll be back soon. So just hold your horses and enjoy the show. Uh, but don't worry, Benny's, Benny's on his way. But for now, it's, it's a sound Dan show, which for my money is a fantastic show anyway. So absolutely. Uh, if you uh, want more, uh, of course, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel, follow us and watch us on twitch.tv slash comic story. And for the live shows on Tuesday nights, Eastern Standard Time, sometime around like 5 p.m., uh, and if you want to help us out more directly, you can always check out some of our uh, internal products. We got a, a hot sauce. This hot sauce is, I have no stake in this. I, I don't uh, I don't support them in any way, but I do eat it. Uh, and so should you. Go to thishotsauceis.com. Right now we got Hotchin Jalapeno. It's a, uh, it's, it's a, uh, okay, speaking honestly, because they never actually sent me a copy. I had to buy it myself. I will tell you, it is more like a salsa than it is a hot sauce. Okay. It's thick. But it is good, uh, and it has absolutely no heat in it whatsoever. So don't uh, don't worry. You know, if you're looking for a spicy thing, go to the next one. They're making another one that's gonna be more spicy. This one, it's more like a more like a green sauce, and uh, it's worth it. Yeah. It's worth checking out. I, I like it. I put it on everything. Drink it. See you next time. <laughs> anyway, and I'll make I'll make sure that the when the next uh, flavor yeah, next comes one, out, send me a copy. I will yeah. make sure Huey sends you one. <laughs> I, Benny kept talking about it. I'm like, all right. I'm going to get it. And so I ordered it. And uh, honestly, yeah, like I, 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 I sampled it. We tried it all around. Uh, all my, uh, on my, my crew had some and they were like, it's pretty good. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. So that, yeah, that is a, see, that is why I let you do these promotions. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate Genuine. it. Yeah. It's, it's not bad. Like I would, I would have another, mm -hmm. we finished it. Let's put it that way. Let's there uh, you go. Anyway, uh, we got a lot of topics. Dan, uh, you curated these things. I'll let you uh, take it from here. Yeah, so uh, we are coming up on Marvel, the 40th anniversary of Spider-Man's black suit. So in standard fashion, Marvel is doing everything Spider-Man black suit related. So yes. we are going to be getting black symbiote suit variants of pretty much every single comic that's coming out between, uh, I want to say like May and August majority of comics you'll see from marvel will have a black symbiote variant i think this is cool i love the suit i mean i think it's a classic that everyone loves the black symbiote suit there's a there's a reason they always bring it back time and time again and i'm excited for this because of gwenpool and i know that's mm. weird but i love when they do that line or like company-wide variants where there's a chance we're going to get a variant that people just latch on to. And then who knows, we get symbiote Iron Man as our next big comic. So. That's true. That's true. Uh, Gwenpool is the result of just drawing Deadpool variants. And uh, there was a Gwen, there was a Gwen Stacy book inexplicably such that it is. I mean, like we're seeing, I mean, we're looking at like variants for like, like a vision. Uh, the fact that like we have this, okay, there's a book, Spider-Man Shadow of the Green Goblin. So it's like, oh, well then, make Green Goblin have a symbiote, but not the one he had when he was Red Goblin. There's a black costume Green Goblin. So it's like, oh, that's a neat idea. That could be the breakout. Um, I like Rogue with a, uh, is that Rogue? I don't know. It's hard to tell. <laughs> looks like Gambit as a woman. I don't know. It's, uh, I, yeah, they're trickier. They're trickier, but I, you know the one that stands out to me the most, the one I like the most, that because it's the most out there, is Captain America. I like the Captain okay. America black costume variant. Now that could be because I always was a big fan of when Captain America became the captain and had essentially the U.S. agent suit pre anyone else getting the suit and then becoming U.S. agent. It was, right. it, it was, it was really just Captain America in a black suit. And as a kid who only read Spider-Man and then like occasionally would see like snapshots of Marvel history seeing, I'm like, Oh my God, Captain America has a cool black suit what's that all about and like oh he's disenfranchised in america like oh okay well, that makes sense uh this is cool it's just black and white i'm like i'm kind of on board it's that one's really cool i i dig the uh the one that they've got for iron man mm -hmm. just because it's the way that they've got it and i hope uh i'll give platt the link so he can put these images up it's awesome because it's kind of like a the black venom symbiote is kind of ripping off for the anti venom symbiote underneath. And I, I kind of yeah. like that. Like it's there. These are some cool suits and the, it's, which is saying something cause they're kind of just black and white versions of their original suits. The vision one, is but the they most still egregious. look great. The one that's vision is just, Oh yeah. Oh, so you did a black and white 
variant coloring of vision, but kept his face red. Like there's no change whatsoever. A couple of a couple of piping or tubing, maybe, but otherwise mm-hmm. nothing. Like you, okay, you just drew vision. And they were like, oh, black uh, black variant got it. I changed the colors. Ms. Marvel, that's another one where it's like, Ms. Marvel getting a symbiote makes a lot of sense. That'd be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Same deal with, with with the Phoenix one. Phoenix, it's you just The Phoenix it. looks cool. I I know it yeah. is just a simple color change, but it works. But, well, and, and but. Phoenix with a with a symbiote, like making mm-hmm. I don't know. Like there's there's something there. There I I I'm not here to pitch, but uh but I will say that's like a neat idea. It's like, yeah. ooh, because like there's a king in black elder cosmic being of the Marvel Universe kind of con- kind of concept there. I'm like, ah. and, and of course, like, you know, Symbiote's supposed to be weak to fire. Phoenix has the eternal flame. It's kind of like, oh, that's interesting. Right. Um, anyway. Yeah. But uh, but that's cool. You know, I mean, obviously it's a cash grab, but uh, I liked you. I liked your optimism. We were like, maybe one of these will be a character or a story arc. And I'm like, can't argue with that, man. That's a good one. I mean, it's we've seen it happen. And symbiotes, I mean, we see symbiotes get tossed around all over the place. We got, oh, yeah. I mean, Agent Venom was a great example of using a Venom symbiote in a non conventional manner that they hadn't done before. And so it's like, who knows? Maybe, maybe we will get a story where it's like, okay, they've Phoenix has the Venom symbiote, it's a part of her. How does she get the flame in there without hurting herself? Like kind of stuff. Dude, I was just at five below the other day. I don't know if you guys have five belows. It's just yeah, we a, got one over okay. here. There, there was a like a blind box section and there was like a venom category where it was just and, it, and it, like the Funko Pops before it, where it's like it's just Thanos with a symbiote. It's mm-hmm. Captain America with a symbiote. Like it's every single member of the Marvel Universe that they're willing to Groot with a symbiote, uh, but as a little PVC figure. And like for a second, you know, as rhetorically saying to myself, like, is there really a market for this? But I'm looking at it at a market. I'm like, I <laughs> guess there is. Like, I guess people are like, what if Thanos had a symbiote? What? Like, and I'm like, I guess I'm like, if I were in charge and some young buck came into my office and was like, so here's the idea. Everyone in the Marvel Universe gets a symbiote. And then we make them into 3D figures that we sell for $9. And it's like, does anyone want that? Like that would be my like. Does there is there any market research to support that theory? Right. Uh, but apparently, like, yeah. So this symbiote like variant cover is just like, yeah, do it. Yeah, I think I think this is awesome. Uh, and then so spinning off of that, maybe we'll get a comic from one of those variants. But we are actually getting a new comic. We are going to be getting Natasha Romanov, Black Widow in Black Widow Venomous number one. It's going to be a one shot where she gets the Venom symbiote, which honestly, I think such a clever person to give it to because Mm -hmm. it's the only spider person that hasn't technically had one that I can think of. And so it's like a nice little like, hey guys, what if we, what if we play on it a little bit? Like, I agree. Black Widow's a spider. Let's do yeah. that. I, I, I don't want Black Widow anywhere near like that Spider-Verse stuff, but I like the the the, the correlation. Because as a kid, I always wondered about Black Widow. You know, especially because mm-hmm. like when I was growing up, Black Widow's costume was this awful gray onesie with a little collar. Right. And a little spider that looked exactly like Spider-Man's logo, but like on, but like on her shoulder, like on her like, I don't know, breast pocket. You're like just in like on this little corner. Mm-hmm. And I remember being like, what, what like uh all right so we were talking about uh the black widow venomous we we looked oh, at yeah, yeah. the so she, she had this you were talking about yeah, she, she had this this logo over her breast pocket and i was like it looks exactly like spider-man's logo that's on his chest but there's no correlation whatsoever and somehow sony has the rights to every spider person under the sun which includes Spider-Woman, who has almost absolutely no affiliation whatsoever with Spider-Man at all. Mm -hmm. And yet Black Widow remains unscathed. And I have to assume it's just because her name's Black Widow. It's not Spider anything. Yep. I I bet in that contract, it was like very specifically Spider in the name was probably what they bought. I bet that's exactly right. They're like, if it says Spider, we own it. (sighs) Uh, I will say though, the... uh, the cover for this Black Widow Venomous, it looks pretty cool because it definitely yeah. looks like she's going to be going 
Honestly, I don't know because with I, Black Widow, she can look deadly and still be a good guy. Oh, true. Um, yeah, we don't know so, what she's doing. Uh, yeah. I, you know, it's very uh, kind of like Eastern inspired in terms of the art style of the cover we're getting. Yes. Um, but you were you were keyed into something funny, very funny, where you were like, uh, regardless of the venomization of Black Widow, I'm sorry, what venom war? Yes. So <laughs> that is what we're going to lead into next. This was announced uh, back in February, guys. I don't know how it missed. Uh, we probably skipped that week and then it just yeah. ended just up in the background. But Marvel up. announced an event called Venom War. In Venom War, we are going to be having Eddie Brock Venom versus Dylan Brock Venom. Yep. That's really, we've got that. We've got an image with it uh, that shows some of the symbiotes that's on each of their side. It looks like on Team Eddie Brock, we've got Agent Anti Venom, aka Flash Thompson. Yep. Uh, we've got Bedlam, which uh, was a reincarnation of Eddie Brock. If you guys, <laughs> wa if you, uh, I believe it was the Dark Web. Uh, we had that weird moment where he's doing something and then he changes and it, we're like, oh, this is the version that becomes Bedlam. Yeah, yeah, it's that's a right. different version of Eddie. Yeah. Um, and then on Team Dylan Brock, we've got Red Goblin, Normie Osborn, okay. Sleeper, and Black Widow, who, yeah. as we just learned, is going to be getting her own symbiote. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I don't, uh, I don't see Spider Man, so I'm thrilled about that. He'll be. He'll be <laughs> like fortunately avoiding this yeah. uh but the thing about it is that it's written by friggin al ewing uh with art by iban coyello uh if you don't know uh i believe coyello did the dark ages tom taylor alternate reality marvel universe story that was like okay. kind of like an elseworlds book great art so it's gonna look cool the promo that we're probably having having on the screen is by philip tan but like the coyello art's gonna be dope mm -hmm. um and uh i i makes sense to me i mean like yeah if, if if Ewing has an idea and it's going to be an event and it's going to be all Venoms all the time, I might actually check this out. Yeah, and it looks like uh, the Venom co-creator David uh, Michelini. Oh, yes. He's going to be writing a new series uh, alongside this. I believe it looks to be called Venom Separation Anxiety. <laughs> set in the early days of uh eddie as lethal protector so mm -hmm. we got a Makes lot of venom me. stuff coming oh, our way plenty of symbiotes it's gonna be goopy i'm excited for this i hope i really hope they keep this event symbiote focused and if they bring anyone else in it's only because they've got a symbiote yeah i don't want i'll be honest i don't want to see spider-man in this no, he this is not a Spider-Man event. And if you put him in there, it'll become a Spider-Man event. And that will take away from what we could get out of this, because I feel like yeah, this event is going to answer and address a lot of questions that people have been having for a very mm -hmm. long time of the inconsistencies between the Venom symbiote, how it reacts to people, why it does this, why it does. And I feel like this is going to give them a chance to really explore all of these different possibilities. So totally. Here's hoping, uh, here's hoping they're able to handle this properly. Cause well, it could I mean, very easily just be a, oh, there's just symbiote fights and it's not anything too spectacular. Yeah. Uh, the fact that uh, Ewing is doing it gives me all the hope in the world. I'm I'm also True. hopeful that this is not like a, well, Ewing's like wrapping up anything doing having to do with X-Men. And I guess he's also wrapping up Venom. I, I haven't actually read anything that says he's leaving uh, Venom, but. I have to assume after Venom War, where do you go from there? It's like mm -hmm. Donny Cates leaving Venom after King and Black. Like this is the time. Um, yeah. But yeah, but I would. I, uh, this is also a great opportunity, folks. If you want to do this, uh, not too late to uh, fix Chasm and give him a symbiote and just make uh, make him a Venom character. That would be fantastic. I think if that would be such a missed opportunity if they don't because mm -hmm. you i mean hell you could even change things to try and explain that a symbiote turned him into the way that he is yeah that's right like it, it like imagine if they were like hey turns out the reason why his memories were getting lost there was a symbiote eating his brain from the inside out yeah there we go that's there you me. go like <laughs> That fixes it for me. I mean, I'm and people sure. go, finally, I don't have to hate him as much. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 
that's fine with me uh, i'll take it please anything all right so uh moving on from there we did uh if you guys have not seen on our channel we did an x-men 97 review the show is fantastic and despite only having three episodes out marvel studios has confirmed that the production of season two is on track and a season three has been greenlit and is in development now now here's the thing right because just really right off the bat the seasons are eight episodes long so it's really more like all three parts of season one are going to be released <laughs> so i mean okay yeah. i mean like you know uh for them, for Hollywood, I'm sure they're like, oh, I wonder who the showrunner will be. I wonder what staff they'll get. For the audience at large, it's going to be like, all right, so like, when are you going to wrap it up? Like, when are you going to, when are you going to get the next part? Right. What I should expect to be a season of show. You know, guys, you'd probably save some money if you just made 24 episodes <laughs> all at once, you know? Just, just toss uh, it out there. Yeah, it's crazy, you know? Uh, can you imagine? explaining to them that there were like i don't know like 48 episodes a season for thundercats yeah you know what i mean like I'm i sorry, miss what? those days i miss the days of seasons being like 26 episodes long or yeah a good amount of episodes but i i was the reason why i put this on here and i'm actually really glad for uh that they are green lighting these so far in advance because yeah. We're we're seeing how fast they are blowing through some of these X Men storylines, mm -hmm. and it gives me a little bit of relief knowing that they know they have a future, so they don't rush through things they don't have to. Yeah, and they'll be able to really properly go through some story arcs and make it maybe a two parter, three parter instead of just okay. Well, we might not have a next season, so let's just cram this into one episode, and then mm -hmm. we'll go on to the next one. So there's there's so much X-Men, they're welcome to do it. Like there's I mean, that no is true. like go for it. You could do one of the seasons could be Age of Apocalypse. Cuz you're talking about eight yeah. episodes. There were more episodes of the X-Men animated series dedicated to the Phoenix Saga mm -hmm. than there are episodes of seasons of this new per, of this new version of the show. So, I mean, you could just you could end season 2 or see no, you could end season one. They're not going to, I don't think, but like you could end season one with like, Hey, this is David Holler. He's uh, Xavier's son. He's going to go back in time and kill Magneto and end all this. And he ends up killing Xavier. Season two is just age of apocalypse. Just, just age of apocalypse. You could do four episodes of age of apocalypse yeah. and then undo it by the midpoint. And then do with the second half of your season be post age of apocalypse fallout or do a whole damn season just in Age of Apocalypse. This is the whole damn world, baby. Wolverine's with Gene. Finally had to lose a hand to get it, but it's still there and he's happening. You know, like uh, any of that stuff. And then season three is we undid it and here we are now. You know what I mean? Like you could. Right. And that and that's just because eight episodes. I mean, you're, and they're not, it's not like these episodes are. It's not like the fall of the House of Usher where it's like, oh, episode, every episode is either 48 minutes or 100 and, or, you know, 104. You know, it's like, no, they're 22 episodes. They're, tw they're 22 minutes long. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, any any epic beloved X-Men saga could be adapted into a three episode arc. And it would still and you still lose stuff, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, but you could I mean, as it stands, we're getting you know, we got Trial of Magneto. We're getting, you know, uh, Inferno. We got, you know, we're, we're getting a whole we're, we're getting all these different uh truncations uh, or retellings of these original classic stories um there's plenty more to go so yeah uh and and what's better is you know green light it now get these episodes in production because you don't need to like break the story you don't need to like mm -hmm. have the writer it's not like rick and morty where it's like oh the show's back oh four episodes we're gonna get a mid-season break for a year and a half and then bring the rest of it back <laughs> you know and, and because dan Harmon's just such a such a like you know anal retentive jackass about his stories and he's like this is gonna, it has to be perfect like okay fine with this it's like no uh season one is this story arc season two is this story arc and within those the that season is these stories just just adapt them so i have a question for you in regards to the x-men 97 and how far they go out yeah. Do you think they'll bring in Krakoa in any way? Because they yes. did do the X-Men 97 comic where they 
basically put Krakoa into the world. Yeah. What, what do you think? Like, do you yeah, think that's think a will. very possible one? Or do we think that's a, maybe if we get season four, season five, then they'll start going into it. I'm, or do I'm you think we'll see it sooner? I'm genuinely shocked. They haven't already like sowed the seeds, the seeds of it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I do think that um, it's inevitable. Whether it's yeah. whether it's uh, in production slash like being adapted, or whether it is a plan later, th- that's the difference we're talking about here. We're not talking about we're not talking about if, but when. Right. When it comes to Krakoa, um, now, you know, it'll look very different from any version of Krakoa we got, and that includes the X Men ninety seven Krakoa comic book that they made. Uh, but you know, it'll be cool. And, Mm -hmm. and, and I, I do, but I do think that's where it would go. My question is like, when, and my hope is that they don't, you know, sandwich Krakoa somewhere in between other things, you know, no, 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 no. Krakoa Mm -hmm. is like the last thing you do. Right. I, I think there's like, I hope so. I, I really hope that this show can last long enough that we see a lot more modern story arcs being adapted into the cartoon show because i would also love to see like imagine if they did a full krakoan season we get x of swords Mm -hmm. like honestly i i was i mean i was disappointed in the comic but in Mm -hmm. a show animated show version yeah i think that would fit very very episode yeah it would be i well that i feel like that would be a great two two or three Yeah, yeah like two or three like we've got that we've got there are just so many different things that I I hope we get to see. I agree. I agree. I think it's a great idea. That, that, that could be uh, Krakow is a season. Yeah, I mean, the and the best part is at all of them, X Men has given you so many easy story devices to reset time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right. So moving on to our next one, we are now moving finally into the DC portion. Uh, James Gunn seems to have plans moving forward to include Blue Beetle and Peacemaker in his DCU in a student mentor relationship. So Gunn has uh, gone on record previously stating that Peacemaker season one, some of it is staying canon to the DCU, not all of it. He's Mm -hmm. also come out stating that Blue Beetle has been repurposed to be in his new DCU. Mm Mm-hmm. The reason why people are bringing up the student mentor relationship is based on a uh, Blue Beetle solo series back in 2006, Mm. where Jaime Reyes gets many different mentors, one of which is Peacemaker, and that is somehow the one that sticks. And James Gunn very clearly is using a lot of his favorite stories and stuff in the influence to what he's doing with all of this. When I read this... yeah. It made me so excited, to be honest, (laughs) because John Cena Peacemaker with, I can't remember the actor's name, Blue Beetle. Yes. Like, I feel like that would just have so much good comedy. And I feel like the, the thought that came through my head was Blue Beetle, since he's probably going to be established as already in the dcu would yeah be a great just low level hero to have peacemaker jump into this new universe fight this bug looking thing and then being like wait wait wait, wait. you're a hero okay, right where the hell am i and then like it starts up like a little kind of buddy cop thing between the two of them yeah yeah i, I mean i think it's got a lot of cool potential what do you think i agree so? i think so i think you're right i mean uh you know obviously this is like we're this is more in more more data about things that we knew which was like we knew that james gunn was acknowledging blue beetle if not incorporating the movie into the universe we knew that peacemaker was carrying over though the first season is out of canon uh so combining them seems almost a little bit too incestuous where it's like well just because you needed to carry over these two remnants of a previous universe doesn't mean you need to merge them into one story (laughs) for each other but at the same time like yeah that makes sense and or at the very least there is precedent for it in the comics cool mm-hmm. 
and uh, and, it, and it gives them both something to do that doesn't also cost you tens of millions of dollars individually. You know, yeah. it's like, because normally if you're like, oh, I'm going to bring back Blue Beetle, it's like, well, what are you going to do? You're going to do uh, Blue and Gold. You're going to do a Blue Beetle, like an you know, adaptation of his series. You're going to redo his movie. Like there's, there's a lot of dicey territory in there because especially if you're going to have like Guy Gardner as a part of a Justice League pastiche type team in your Superman movie, that suggests that like there is a Blue Beetle in this universe and it's Ted Cord. So what's happening there? So if you if you move Blue Beetle over to like a peacemaker kind of subversive or even just comedy character, uh, and and pair them up and 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 kill two birds with one stone, you're saving yourself some time, money, and frankly, just some complications. So oh, yeah. it, makes, it makes sense to me. And plus they can easily just name the movie Peacemaker, red, white, and blue. Boom. There you go. There you <laughs> just yeah, they owe you ten thousand dollars. <laughs> exactly. I, I'll take the check in the mail. Uh no, I I this first off, I will say, I am so glad this was an existing story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that that made me happy to know. All. Like I there are so many times that I look things up and I'm looking up for the channel or for the new show. And I read these stories that existed and I'm like, how did this story exist and people don't talk about it? Seriously, I never knew. I never knew that uh, Jaime and, uh, and and Peacemaker teamed up or yeah. that he was a mentor in any way. And yet here it is in uh, in all four colors. It's like, all right, okay, well, if there's a precedent and it's not like blasphemous or stupid, then I'm on, I'm on board. The best is, uh, let me open it up because there were they gave a couple panels from their little their little uh mini series and one of my favorite ones it's it's peacemaker talking to me he goes so now you know kid the scarab was built by some alien race some alien race big bad enough to have a beef with green lanterns like that's that's his way to talk to him is like yeah so you got to ask yourself two questions are you ready for this <laughs> and are you ready to fight green lanterns yeah but that's it's cool. i i could see john cena rock in that role of yeah. a mentor oh, that should not be a mentor basically yeah so. i love that i love that concept a lot that's good it's really fun i'd say go for it yeah uh last up on our list of news topics this one's a very small one we've got joker 2 has finally released their first poster for the movie and announced the date for the Joker 2 trailer. Joker 2 trailer will be out next Tuesday. Benny and Sal will be doing uh, a reaction of that, either a separate video or in next week's Absolute Comics. But our image for the uh, poster, uh, I will put up on the stream here. And I will provide it to Platt afterwards. Mm-hmm. All right, so the image we've got is of Joaquin Phoenix holding Lady Gaga, and it's got the quote, the world is a stage. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to expect from this. I don't think anyone knows what to expect from this. It's true. Yeah, to, to say that you know what they're going to do is to lie. Uh, there's no way you could, you know, uh, we've heard rumblings. I've heard some, not like leaks, but you know, that... I don't think it's I'm, I'm sure there'll be like at least one original composition, but for the most part, it's going to be similar to Moulin Rouge where it's like they're okay. they're rock ballad musical interpretations of contemporary songs. So it's like, yeah, like you you'll recognize the music without having to, like, you know, listen to the soundtrack a hundred times. Like, you'll know what they're singing. Right. Um, I, you know, the the poster itself, like, yeah, it makes sense we saw some leaked images of Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. And so they're like, all right, get this in front of people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, uh, I think this is the most pretentious thing I've seen in a long time. <laughs> I can't for the life of me care in any way about this movie from the title to this AI inspired poster. I think it looks like it's, hot garbage i couldn't care less about any of this i i think that from inception to execution this is stupid and uh i didn't like the first movie I, i'll be hard pressed to see this one eat it 
I don't care about this movie at all. I I, I genuinely yeah, yeah. and like calling it Fualadu, like there's nothing French about anything that's happening in this movie. Like so actually I wanna that. quickly say <laughs> Yeah, I looked up the definition of uh, folly adieu yeah. is delusion or mental illness shared by two people in close association. So it does actually fit what they're going for. But yeah, it's. Uh... Yeah, I mean, it sounds I mean, like, honestly, from that, it sounds like Sucker Punch. Which is horrible. <laughs> it's got great uh, fight scenes in it. Two different directors. Yeah, no, it's a. It, oh, no, if. if if uh if if sucker punch was set to like a pearl jam album it would be awesome um but it's but yeah and obviously they're made by different filmmakers i'm just saying right. like, in similar where it's like oh it's this movie like you i i would not be the least bit surprised if at the end of it none of it happened and it's just two people in an in asylum together that are sharing like a like not even a room like just just neighbors and they're singing at each other or they're like hearing each other i'm just like I don't care. I, I, you know, the first one was asking a lot and this looks, there's nothing about this that appeals to me. Like, and, and, and it feels like it's, you know, it feels like a, like, yeah, I, I won't go any further. It, it sounds like, cause, cause I'll just get insulting at this point for now. I'm just, I'll just say for, for me, it looks pretentious and terrible. That's and fair. I couldn't care less. And I, I, you know, Oh, but it's a musical. Well, that's, that is not helping things, you know, uh, especially because like, and I think it's actually funny that like they're advertising it as a musical because um, Hollywood hates them. And they're like afraid of advertising them to you. Like Willy Wonka and mean girls where they were like, Oh, don't like promote that. It's a musical. Mm hmm. You know, just trick people into going to see it and then let them be pleasantly surprised when it is a musical, like which people love being being bamboozled into right. going to a movie. Um, at least in this case, I, I admire the honesty that there will be singing in it. And I, I also know that, uh, that yeah. Lady Gaga is a good performer. I li like her a lot. Definitely. Like I this this movie, I feel, is going to be one of those ones where it's either going to be a flop that everyone goes, why did you make a sequel? Mm -hmm. Or it becomes a cultural phenomenon, like the first one. There's did. no way it'll become a... Like, I know thing. it's I very, very unlikely, but I feel like that it, it's going to be one of those ones where it's, it's such a unique, interesting idea that... It is, yeah. You can nail it. I've, I've seen movies and ideas that I thought were terrible ideas come to life, and I'm like, okay, that blew my mind with how amazing that was and this is going to be one that it's going to be very tricky to do that it's going to yes. be very hard i think if they do like like you said the moulin rouge style yeah i think that's the best way to do it i mean it's, I mean, it's the only way to do it really yeah it's just the problem with this is the stuff that joker does is going to yeah. be very odd with what's going on. I feel like the only way that this could work would mm -hmm. be if we see two movies in one, basically. And one of them, it starts off as one and it branches off into two, where one, we see Joker's vision of everything and how he's the Joker. Yeah. And then the other is we see Harley Quinn, who slowly grows in this romantic interest towards the Joker that she starts getting a little crazier and she starts breaking out into song and they use that musical aspect of it to really emphasize her sanity and it yeah. being gone and it her losing it. And who knows, maybe we do that uh, misdirection at the end where it turns out majority of this was Harley Quinn talking to her therapist while in Arkham. And right. it turns out like it was all a inner monologue her storytelling and stuff do i think that that's actually going to happen it's a very low possibility but i've been proven wrong before lady <laughs> gaga is I, I mean honestly if any musical talent was to do a weird project like this lady gaga is the one to do it like she yeah. already does that kind of stuff and joaquin phoenix showed that he knew how to portray the joker in the the joker that everyone loved so yep. 
maybe we'll get this and we'll all be like, hey, we're happy to be wrong or maybe yeah. it'll come out and people will just treat it like the first live action avatar. <laughs> I mean, who knows? I, the, you know, the first movie made a billion dollars and uh, this one won't. I, I think I think it's safe to say that because I think those, day, those days are over. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do think that, uh, uh, you know, I don't know who this is for outside of people who like deify the first movie. You know, people who are like, I, this is a spiritual awakening for me. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't see as many movies as a kid because like, <laughs> you know, you, you really, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I hope it's a gateway for you to see movies beyond just Scarface. But, uh, and this movie isn't Scarface. I'm just saying like, you know, it, it, there seems to be a cross section of people who think that this movie is rad and also have like a boondock saints poster on the wall. But, right. uh, you know, this is um, good luck to you. Hope it works out for you. I uh, I won't be there opening day, and I uh, if I live and breathe, hopefully I won't see it. <laughs> That's fair. I, uh, yeah. So that brings us to the end of news topics that I found today. Uh, we do. <laughs> this is a shorter episode, so uh, I wanted to quickly talk to you. I wanted to get your opinion on the current Superior Spider-Man run. We didn't start the episode with what comics we've been reading uh, like we it's usually true. do. Um, but I just caught up on Superior Spider-Man, Ultimate Spider-Man, and the Batman. Yep. But Superior Spider-Man... So I basically just read issues one through six. So I have the whole thing in my head. I loved how convoluted... Mm -hmm. And well explained they were when they're like, okay, Otto, so this is the version of you that was good. This is the version of you that's now Spider-Verse happened, so you don't have that. And like how they actually made it make sense. Yep. And how, like the story is just, I, I, I'm just enjoying it a lot with how they made that make sense. The fact that Otto's good, well, Otto's Otto, and we're having that moment where it is a, okay, can he be good again? Like, where is he going to go with this? We finally got something with Bailey. Uh, I loved the fact that the villain constantly is apologizing for hurting people because she's <laughs> not like wanting to be a villain, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. But what are what are your thoughts on this? Because you're a huge Spider-Man guy and you read all of that when it was coming I did, out. Yeah, and stuff, it's so. a, I think you. I assume you did too. But it was it was an exciting time when Superior not the original out. Superior. No, really. I mm -hmm. I definitely read it when it was coming out. It was. Uh, because I was reading Amazing Spider-Man, I loved Dan Slott's run back in the day. Like I, I really loved uh, Big Time, and uh, the longer he stayed, the more uh, tired I was of him being on the book. But uh, Superior Spider-Man was a shot in the arm that series seriously needed. And uh, I remember the online you know, scuttlebutt people were just losing their minds over serialized fiction for a flagship character like they were never going to bring back spider-man um, right doesn't mean that it wasn't weird and creepy like there wasn't like mo like like doc ock masturbating furiously to memories of a girl he doesn't know like th yeah, there's there's stuff in there i'm like there's something in here that people need to address but uh but outside of the that you know and and, and the creepy factor and the character assassination of Mary Jane, but like everyone gets a chance to do that if you write Spider-Man eventually um, in the last 25 years. But, right. um, and when I say that, I really only mean about 20 or 15 years. But in any case, uh, I really enjoyed that series for what it was. And I was like, but, and, and, it, and it brought out a new audience for that character that was that could rival Amazing Spider-Man in sales. I mean, now mm -hmm. it replaced Amazing Spider-Man in sales because it was just the only book coming out, but it was an opportunity for Marvel to go, and now there's two books. Right. Because there was no other Spider-Man book at the time. Like, there's no spectacular, no web of, no adjective list. There's just Amazing Spider-Man. So it's like, this is a great opportunity to have two different Spider-Man books, superior and amazing, and Ox over there and Pete's over here. And so you got the audience that goes over there and you got the audience that was always there for amazing Spider-Man and they could rake in the cash, but they botched that one as always. And they've never been able to recapture it, you know, like because they've brought back superior Spider-Man like two times since then. Yep. And this may be the second or third time. I'm not quite sure, but like uh, superior Spider-Man has brought back, been brought back enough times for him to make a deal with Mephisto. So there's enough, superior spider-man existing post its original series for there to be like an omnibus of this damn character <laughs> this is the first time that like it seemed like it was actually a good idea because right. you know it's it's 
directly dealing with the fallout of the original series. It's seeing Pete and Otto working side by side. It's arguably the better of the two books between Amazing and Superior right now, mm-hmm. uh, because Amazing is just a, just a, just a slog. But um, but it's 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 fun to watch because the art's pretty fun. Occasionally Bagley comes in and it looks really great and uh, seminal uh, Spider-Man artist, uh, you know, harkening back to a classic era and, you know, gives it that nostalgia factor. Um, and I, it, but also it's doing other things. It's, it's adding to the, to the world. It had, a, it did, there did a whole damn Spider-Verse book that uh, ties into it as well. Uh, the, the creation of the Bailey character and seeing Bailey, the spider boy integrated into this book, a character I have no regard for and have not zero interest in, but I also will acknowledge love the design, love the color scheme. And I love the costume. Like, I think he looks great. I just don't want him anywhere near my book. I don't want him in the main universe. Uh, But if you're going to do what you did to him in this most recent issue, like if that's why he exists, now I'm in, now I'm in for it. Right. It's, I I love I love Bailey because of the fact that it I feel like it's the most original spider character we've had in a while. Mm. Like I feel like most other spider characters we get it's hey, what if this person from Peter's life got powers or got the spider instead or what if like it's always pre-existing people. So I like that there's a lot of mystery around Bailey that we don't know that allows for a lot of different story devices. Um, I de- so I definitely did not read the original Superior because actually I remember the earliest Spider-Man I recall uh, when I started working here was Spider-Verse. So yeah. it was literally the conclusion of Superior Spider-Man. So I got to see all the fallout and like Parker Industries and I always liked that stuff. And so each time we got the Superior Spider-Man, uh, for example, in... I believe Spider Geddon, he was yeah. a prominent character. And then I believe he had the superior octopus. Yes. Which was like their attempt at trying to give him that. And I feel like this is their second attempt of yes. we're either going to make him a hero by killing off uh, Anna Marie. Because, oh, yeah. Anna Maria. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because he does need that loss to. Like, like they said, he didn't have his uncle Ben. He didn't have, uh, I can't remember what movement they say, but they're like, when Spider-Verse happened, the thing that made you good is no longer there. Yeah. So I don't trust you. So I like that we are getting that aspect of him. Yep. I I don't know where it's going and I'm loving it. And I, no, me too. I'm really glad that I chose that as one of the comics that I'm going to try and keep up with because... Yeah, and it's an easy read. It, it you know comes out when it comes out. It's a it's one book. There's no tie-ins, it, it, and it, and it's really compressed. There's a lot going on in it. Um, and, and and you know the players, and and there's a lot of history with all of them. Like you could trace uh the the main villain of that series right now uh to her origins from uh back in the day. Like it's a it's a cool character from big time, I believe. Like there's mm-hmm. th- there's a lot going on, and and there's a lot uh you know to like about it. Um. And yeah, I do think you're right that it is also an attempt to like right the wrongs of a wasted opportunity like Superior Spider-Man. Like I, I, I honestly think you could jump from Superior Spider-Man to this without reading pretty much any other appearance of Doc Ock, and you'll be fine. Yeah, um, I mean, I, you don't I, you have to read the first one. Like they, they are doing such a good job in this of giving you the information you need. At no point have I felt like previous comics where they kind of go here's a small little hint that we're gonna try and make you go read this old story no they're just straight up like hey peter you remember that girl that we convinced to work for you yep she's the one that got trapped in that thing and got power and you're like okay thank you you made it very easy for me to read this but also left it open enough that i'm like well i could i could still go read that and have a full story totally exactly uh, were there any other comics that you wanted to talk about in specific or? Oh, talking about uh, new like books that uh, I, I unfortunately didn't, didn't get a chance to read anything that came out this this week. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I mean, obviously, Ultimate Spider-Man was great. Um, I, I, I need to give a shout out to a series that I know most folk aren't reading that is really, really good and is very much part. There's actually quite a few of those right now that are out that people are not reading enough of that they should be checking out. But if you're like a DC fan, if you say like, Oh, I love DC, 
and I love DC Universe and I love all the stuff. Then you should be reading Green Arrow because Williamson's Green Arrow with Sean Isaacs on art is such a good book and it's so fun. And it's so intrinsically DC and uh, it, you know it's it's very much self-contained to Green Arrow and his family. And if you don't know it, you'll want to by the end. Uh, we're on issue ten right now and it's just such a fun series and it looks good. It's just a really good looking series. Um, you know, DC is really, really doing a good job, like getting some really good talent. Like the most recent Flash issue that just dropped, uh, number seven, uh, has Ramon uh, Perez on art, uh, and and I know Ramon Perez from like old web comics, like Kookaburi and stuff, and like it's just he did a book uh, called Tales of Sand that people need to check out if they love comics. Um, but uh, but seeing him on Flash and seeing it be like, no, it's a mainstream superhero comic. It doesn't feel like that because it's written by Spurrier, but it does have that feeling to it, and it's like but with perez on art it's like man something special going on here uh it's only for a limited time uh and uh you know of course penguin is an amazing book but any i mean like tom king is just he's just killing it right now with the uh, helena yeah. winhorn and other books like that but like penguin is a is like the best batman book on the shelves right now like it's oh, just wow. totally worth reading uh it, it's just so fun and cool although i can't discount dark age uh that most recent uh kind of else worlds black label book from uh mark russell it's so weird and quirky and fun it has like an old school else worlds vibe which is really cool um you know there, there's a ton i mean like you know obviously gods is canceled but like it's on issue six there's two more issues left if you were ever looking for like a Marvel universe through a crazy lens of like crack mirror magic, that is the book for you. Uh, getting back to DC this week, birds of prey dropped. I love that book. Birds of prey is so good. It's so fun. Um, yeah. There's a lot of books that I'm reading now that I'm, that I'm enjoying uh, overall. Nice. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a good time to be a reader right now. It, re it really is. I, uh, I'm glad you mentioned the Batman comics as well though. Cause the newest Batman that came out today. Yes. It's uh so they're still going into the robot Batman and in this one there is a line in it that made me realize robot Batman is what fans talk about Batman as when they're talking like in any sort of conversation whatsoever. He's always got the prep time. He's always advanced. He's always going to beat everyone. He's going to capture every single villain. He's going to do and he I at the more and more I read it the more I'm like this is the ideal, idealistic Batman that the fans always dream of. And then we get the Bruce Wayne side where you go, this is the realistic Batman that's getting broken, that is losing time and time again, that is pushing through for these different things. And I, it was just one of those things. I don't know if it's intentional or anything like that, but it was yeah. just a really cool comparison of the perfect Batman that everyone always says, oh yeah, Batman can beat anyone with enough prep time. And it's like, right. yeah, well, yeah, this robot has all the prep time. Like he doesn't <laughs> have to do anything. Um, yeah. If you guys have been reading the Batman and have been enjoying that, it it's still really good. I really do recommend it. Um, it did come out with issue, I want to say 146 today. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, totally. But I believe... That brings us to the conclusion of today's episode of Absolute Comics. Thank you guys so much for being here today. I know it was a little bit of a uh, shorter one since we're still uh, trying to find news. But hey, you know what? Thankfully, Marvel gave us a lot of venom and a lot of symbiotes to fill out half <laughs> this sure episode. Did. <laughs> but Marvel's uh, always happy to oblige us with symbiotes, I'll tell you that. Exactly. Symbiotes or spiders, one or the other. Wow. Anyway, guys, he is Sal. You can check him out at Comic Pop or Comic Pop Returns. I am Dan. I'm over at the Comic Storian family. You know all of the stuff over there, Comic Storian, Manga Storian. Thank you guys so much for being here, and we will see you all next time.